I feel like such a boomer having to look up the definition of this phrase, but I feel like it completely matches what's happening right now with Microsoft and they're uh, just bring baffling choices right now. And that's hold my beer. And if you know the expression, hold my beer, just to kill we're on the same page, hold my beer is an expression joked about being said before an unthinking person does something dangerous or stupid. I know, I just feel like that's very fitting right now. And just like a weird lack of self-awareness of what they're saying and doing within this company. Like we talked about in my previous video, like this email by Matt Booty that went along with everyone within Microsoft Game Studios to kind of let them know what's going on, kind of like, hey, this is what's happening, this is what's closing and stuff like that. But at the end of it, just had like a really tone deaf message in my opinion, kind of like almost like he's trying to like advertise why Microsoft is still great. Like he kind of almost felt like this, he knew that this email was going to get leaked because he's like, oh, but also in 2024, along with Starfield Shattered Space, Fallout 76 update, Indiana Jones with Great Circle, and the Elder Scrolls update, we align our plans and resources and ourselves to keep the game industry strong with Bethesda and all that kind of stuff. But just like, you're delivering all this terrible news and then you're just gonna be like don't worry you guys are still doing great though we're still very much tied to what you guys have to provide for us and it just felt so just out of place and a lack of self-awareness because like when you're delivering such terrible news you don't want to try to like advertise like why you guys are doing so great because like a lot of these studios that they let go have been doing pretty fine for themselves and then they're just saying like oh but we also have other great stuff coming out that but it's like if they do great what do they still get shut down oh it's the lack of self-awareness is just so odd. Also, did you know that this number is actually going up right now? And that is the amount of people who are not subscribed watching this channel right now. We're at 64.8%. It's going up. If you guys want to stay up to date with everything going on with gaming and Halo and everything else in between, tap like and subscribe and let's get right back into those details. And this news just dropped saying that Microsoft says it needs games like Hi-Fi Rush the day after killing its studio. Because if you scroll down a little bit, Matt Booty, the same guy I'm talking about who sent that email, I think he just doesn't know what he's saying or something, said in a town hall amongst uh, very people within various people within the division, say, we need smaller games that give us prestige and awards. Huh. I wonder what games can do that for you. And you know what he's actually really saying behind that? It says, we need games that cost less, but also deliver just as many benefits as a huge budget game, but cost less for us and have smaller teams. That would be great. And while 2024 definitely seems to be the year of the indie dev, the small development team, with games like Power World, Helldivers, recent release of Grey Zone Warfare, which has been fun, and now Arena Breakout Infinite Beta has been going live and people have been praising that. But games like Helldivers and Power World are exceptions to the rule. They don't come around very often and they are not this well received, but when they are received, well, I mean, they blow up. These games are made by very small teams and they rise up to huge stats, like say like Among Us as well, throw that in there. But then you see the problem is that like you have these highlighted titles, but you don't really hear many of the failures because they don't get that PR. They don't get that spotlight like these games are getting right now because like it's taken up by all the AAA games. You know when AAA games fail, but you don't really recognize when smaller dev teams fail. And just seeing this statement right here made by Matt Booty saying that we need smaller games that give us prestige and rewards, like, dude, like, wow, it's just like the lack of self-awareness is insane, but apparently Microsoft just isn't quite done yet. As reported by Jason Schreier, an insanely credible source saying that Microsoft Xbox is planning more cuts after studio closings. And to summarize the article, Xbox is not done cutting costs, sent voluntary buyouts offers to some ZeniMax staff. Others across the Xbox organization have been told that more cuts are on the way. Why were Arcane Austin and Tango Gameworks closed? bad timing perhaps and activision purchase has ramped up scrutiny on xbox i mean this really is nothing new within the game industry over the past year and a half because all these execs made all these huge buy-ins and anticipations that like the 2020 numbers were going to stay high and even go higher but then they leveled down because people were able to go back outside and live their lives again. So all these execs were like, oh my God, I spent all this money in the wrong place. Uh, we need to fire everybody who actually made the content for us. And I can kind of see how Jason Schreier's reporting says that Arcane Austin and Tango Gameworks are just at the wrong place at the wrong time kind of thing, which kind of makes sense because both those studios just released their games, right? And so they weren't really in full production, if not pre-production at best and whatever their next project was. We know that Arcane Austin was very much still in the works when it comes to fixing up Redfall, making it offline mode, 
putting out that DLC that was promised at the launch of the game. And he had Tangle Gameworks, of course, made Hi-Fi Rush, which apparently was praised by Microsoft so many times over. Microsoft VP Aaron Greenberg saying that like Hi-Fi Rush met all their expectations if not beyond that when it comes to sales and performance. But then again, like a year later after making that statement, the studio shuts down. So how is it bad timing for Tangle Gameworks, right? They just had a great game come out. Well, the thing is that they did just have a game come out. And so it's going to be probably a few years until their next game came out and Microsoft probably need to make some cuts knowing that they needed to shut down some studios and before say like Tango Gameworks or Arcane Austin or any of these other studios get into the full development to whatever their next project is going to be this cut kind of off right from there. Now, many of you who watch this channel come here for Halo content, Halo discussion, you're probably thinking, well, well how come 343 never got the chopping block? They haven't released a solid product that's been well received for many years. And many plays point this out. And I'm not going to advocate for more studio shutdowns, but simply by logic alone, we need to take an honest look at this, okay? We have here Tango Gameworks, who made a phenomenal game that, according to Xbox executives, sold well enough and earned itself a port to other platforms to sell more copies. And eventually I imagine will be announced to be sold on Nintendo Switch. They get shut down. Okay, but then you have 343 with the Halo license who gets to fuck around for not one, not two, but three times in a row and stumble out the gate with a live service title, but yet they come out clean? What is the focus here? What is the rationale here? It makes no sense if you look at their behavior in the past versus now. I know 343 got hit with layoffs, but by all intents and purposes, by Xbox's logic with how they approach Bethesda here, that team should have been fully shut down for being incompetent multiple releases in a row. Which any diehard Fire 343 person out there is probably saying like, yeah, why doesn't 343 get cut, right? Well, it's because they're at the right time in their development cycle right now. We do know that 343 has been working on a new Halo title since at least 20 2022 according to these linkedin profile pages so 343 doesn't get the axe because they're literally in the middle of production of the next product xbox has already made that investment for the next halo title and you can see that 343 are hiring right now for various manager positions lead positions even director positions they're looking for as well so like they're just at the right time in their development cycle to not get cut by microsoft also basically everyone who was part of the old guard at 343 has pretty much left the company since the launch of halo infinite and it's been a year and a half since Pierre Hens took over 343. And also Halo kind of gets a special pass when it comes to Microsoft in general just because of mainly from this quote from Phil Spencer. Again, this was an older quote, but I think it still holds true saying that if we lose our way with Halo, we lose our way with Xbox. Of course, this was said back in 2011 and as showcased earlier, you can't trust exactly what these execs say in, in public. But hey, they could maybe still be on the chopping block. You never know, as it did show earlier, saying Xbox is not done cutting costs and, you know, we're probably shutting down a few more studios here and there. And as Microsoft continues to make qu just questionable decisions here, it looks like they're looking to pass the buck onto you, the player here, by raising the prices and maybe not bringing some key titles to Game Pass. And let me show you what I'm talking about. This article here, by the version inside Microsoft's Xbox Turmoil has been a bit nuts right now. It's saying right here, saying that uh, inside Xbox now there is uncertainty about what the future holds and questions over Microsoft's gaming strategy. While Microsoft is looking toward a more PC-like future for the Xbox console, the company continues to battle a slowdown in Game Pass subscribers, lackluster game console sales, and game launch delays. Which is odd because I showed this in my last video that the fiscal earnings call that they recently had back in April, right? So just recently, if you scroll down to the gaming side of things, you actually just looked at the transcript, what they're talking about, saying that uh, third quarter revenue was $61.9 billion, 17%, and earnings per share was up uh, by 20% as well. So Microsoft, it's still making money with gaming. But Xbox has always been the solid third place when it comes to the console wars between Nintendo and Sony. And that's just the lingering effects of the debacle the Xbox One release was. So maybe the purchase of Activision was more of trying to push their way into more of a publisher-only role while maybe phasing out the hardware side of things. As a player who buys in the Game Pass, right, when I saw the Activision Blizzard acquisition, I'm like, sweet, I'll probably get those games on Game Pass just like they did with Bethesda, right? That would make a lot of sense. Well, according to inside information about Microsoft, things aren't looking as promising. Saying right here is that Microsoft has had internal debates whether to put its release of Call of Duty onto Game Pass, which I feel like is such an odd choice because they say right here that 
that Game Pass subscribers have been kind of down recently, that would be a surefire way to increase your subscriber base by a lot. So maybe they're just saying like, hey, our traditional method is to sell like the $60, $70, $120 double plus good edition. We don't want to put it on Game Pass from Activision side of things, but the Xbox might be like, no, we'll put it on Game Pass to get those subscribers and get that continuous revenue coming into the game, which I would be shocked if we do not see Call of Duty come to Game Pass because the most recent title that came to Game Pass Diablo 4, a pretty solid game. I've heard the season's been kind of meh right now. I'm still looking to jump back in during season four and see how this game actually plays out. But like, if you're gonna have select games on Game Pass through the Activision Blizzard acquisition, just seems like a really odd choice. But again, Microsoft's been the king of odd choices recently. And like I stated earlier, they're looking to pass the buck to you, the gamer, when it comes to buying into Game Pass, saying that I'm told Microsoft is also considering an increase to the price of Game Pass Ultimate again, which would be crazy to me because they already raised their prices last year. Back in July of 23, this isn't even a year ago, and they raised their prices per month for the cost of Game Pass. So I would just be shocked that they do that as well but this would just be an absolutely disastrous decision to do that do that as well well closing down studios with potentially more to come than to raise the price of game pass would just be insanity to me and again maybe all this before the xbox showcase in june again it's just wild that microsoft was willing to drop 69 billion dollars on this acquisition for activision blizzard king but then also have to cut people for cost reasons but i guess we'll just have to brace ourselves until the next crazy xbox decision is made if you guys made it this far in the video how about like a green heart emoji just to see how many people made it in within the comments here if you made it into the video this long as well i hope i earned a like and possibly a subscribe but thank you all for watching i'll catch you on the next one peace out